thank you very much for being on our show, Kevin. Oh, my pleasure. Oh, wow. <laughs> when I looked at uh, trying to do some research on you, <laughs> the, the, the content, the work that you have done in all this year is crazily massive. <laughs> Until the moment <laughs> before I interview you on this podcast, I'm still reading your article. It's amazing. So you're very, very famous in the cow computing world. Perhaps uh, we can kick off this episode by asking you, can you briefly talk about your background? What made you a globally recognized cloud computing expert and why is technology education your mission? Sure. So first of all, thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, I really um, enjoy the opportunity of, of, of sharing with people the uh, how advanced technology can really improve not just your life and your business, but the way you can interact and work uh, with others globally. I mean, one of the most important realizations for an individual is to know that we are all in the same world and we have to work together. Um, and the past pandemic was really the first time the uh, world, everyone in the world, experienced mm. the same thing at the same time and were able to talk about it and develop a, a global answer uh, to, to the challenge. So um, I guess I grew up in the, in the 60s and really got hooked on like Star Trek and space travel and, and technology, right? Mm. And, um, and as I was in school, that really kept my interest in, in math and science uh, uh, throughout school. So uh, eventually that really became uh, really a personal and professional driver uh, mm. in my life, right? I just, I just enjoyed it and it, it really has served me well mm. uh, and sort of became my superpower. You know, as, <laughs> as, as, people, as people go through the, as life, they find mm -hmm. out the things that they like and the things mm -hmm. that they are good in. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually my superpower mm -hmm. became explaining advanced technology in an mm -hmm. understandable way. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I really enjoyed is, you know, when I'm talking to somebody about something that's very complex mm -hmm. or technical, and I put it in words that relate to their life, then their eyes sort of light up mm. and they really realize how important technology can be to them personally and professionally. So I just love mm. being sort of an educator and a, and a mentor. And it mm. became a, a real part of my professional repertoire. So that's why, you know, I've, you know, started writing and books mm. and videos and, and, and everything. Um, mm, before I ask you the body of work that you have done all these years, uh, is there any uh, achievement mm, you are more, most proud of by yourself, by your own measure. Because yeah, I just told many, but I want to know your perspective about your own achievement. Which one is your, maybe one, two, maybe, maybe one or two or three. <laughs> I just want to know more about you. <laughs> so from my, I guess, sort of my background, um, I, uh, I was in the U.S. Navy for quite a while, and I was I was uh, I was a carrier pilot. I flew on and off aircraft carriers, mm -hmm. and 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 as I told before, I you know I, I got really hooked 
on Star Trek and, and space travel. And I wanted to be an astronaut, like many people in, in the 60s. Mm. So, um, and that's sort of why I focused on, mm. on technology. Um, mm. I, I read a lot of books uh, and tried to learn what it would take to become an astronaut. And at that time, anyone that went to space were military pilots oh. uh, back in the 60s. So um, I made it my goal to become a military pilot uh, and jet pilot so that I could go to space. Uh, and I actually accomplished that dream in that yeah. I, I uh, was good in math, <laughs> I was good in science, <laughs> Um, and uh, I went to the U.S. Naval Academy, and I uh, was selected to become a pilot. And and for 15 years, I, I flew on and off aircraft carriers around the world, um, and I've flown in many different types of, of aircraft. And I guess that's one of my... Um, accomplishments I'm very proud of being able mm -hmm. to become a pilot and, and, and travel around the world. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I didn't become an astronaut uh, <laughs> because of a, um, a health issue. I, uh, hypertension mm -hmm. prevented me from becoming an astronaut. But I still worked in the Navy as a space system engineer operating low Earth orbit wow. satellites. And um, I, by doing that, I actually got an opportunity to work on the space shuttle and to um, be oh, wow. part of the team that uh, did experiments on the space shuttle. And I actually was part of the team that processed and launched the New Horizon spacecraft that went to Pluto. So uh, in a way, I actually fulfilled my dream of working uh, in, in space. And, uh, and, and I, I guess that taught me that you should always have a dream and, and focus on accomplishing what makes you happy uh, in your life. And um, so I, I think uh, that is another aspect of things that I'm very proud of. The fact that I'm in the position now where I can help people understand technology and, and things like cloud computing and how they can apply it to improve their own business or their own mm -hmm. life. So, now my superpower of mm. being able to explain advanced technology has become my life work in helping and helping businesses, governments, and individuals leverage advanced technology and creating brand new business models. Um, so, um, so that is also something I'm, I'm really proud of my my ability to mm. reach out to the world mm. and be consequential to the global society thank you thank you so much finally i can know something that uh from your own perspective because everywhere in the internet world i just see he's very famous in cloud computing in the, he used to be a lady and he know everything about computer and then yeah probably i know that and clearly you are a very good educator uh i'm very grateful for the students uh oh, so i mean really my uh, when i was in the navy i gained uh experience working with global networks and Mm. and the, the rapidly evolving distributed computing technology. Um, and that really continued in the commercial world um, mm. after the military with, when I worked with um, IBM and service-oriented architecture and, and, and mm. J.P. Morgan Chase. And 
um, eventually found myself working for the US intelligence community on mm. cloud computing. Um, mm. So I never, I mean, cloud computing didn't exist when I was going in school, right? <laughs> yes. So, um, but I saw this as mm. the future of both government and commercial information technology. And, mm. I, and I wanted to learn more so that mm. that desire to continually learn uh, is mm. something that's important for everyone. You, you have to always uh, be ready to reinvent yourself by learning yeah. and continuing to improve yourself. So, um, and back, I wanted to learn more and someone suggested that I should try out <laughs> this brand new social media thing. <laughs> so this is, you know, nobody knew what social media was and, and it told me that, you know, this, this thing called blogging could be something where you could help you continually learn about the world. You could mm -hmm. learn about cloud computing by communicating directly to the world. And, and this was the genesis of, of my, my first blog, Cloud mm -hmm. Musings. Um, mm -hmm. And that platform has expanded and grew into what it is today. Yeah, you are a very, you are a very prolific writer. I see your blog content, your book, and then, wow, there's so much. And you didn't just reinvent yourself. You, you reinvent private organization and also the U.S. government. You had helped the form, former U.S. President Barack Obama to help me invent the uh, IT system for the government, right? So when I was, uh, I was working as part of a large team in the intelligence community mm. on helping deploy the um, mm. uh, community cloud for the, the, the military. Um, I also was able to uh, work in the development of FedRAMP or the Federal Risk Authorization and Management uh, Program wow. uh, that the um, Vivek Kundra, which was the first, uh, he was the first CIO for the United States under President Barack Obama. So um, I, was, uh, I was honored to be um, part of a team that helped with, worked with NIST, the National wow. Institute of Standards and Technologies to actually develop new policies for the US government in cloud computing. And uh, since then, I've actually been able to work with other governments like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and and uh, the Great Britain and Australia uh, to oh, wow. help them develop their policies uh, in, in this area. So um, uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been doing a lot in cloud, cloud computing and, and cloud computing is actually the foundation for many of the other technologies that are essential to business today. Totally agree. Uh, yeah, that's the reason why I want you so bad on this show because I <laughs> I became a programmer half a decade ago, and uh -huh. the moment I already have some uh, so many cow computer resources. When I go to the coding boot camp, I learn AWS, uh, uh, Ocean. Ocean, those kind of cloud computing. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really see a actual server before. And when I have the chance to actually see a CPU server in the rack, I just watch the game because I really want to see. And uh, you have seen all the changes in all these years. But anyway, uh, I, I want to ask you about the service that you, uh, you have been providing in the uh, cow community. You have so okay. many. Yeah. yeah. Can you give Can us you give an us overview about, about uh, uh, GovCow network, network, Auto network, network service, GC Global Net, Social Connect, 
uh, even surprising now as a podcast, I have listened to it. Can you talk about all of these? Give us an overview. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to summarize by myself where I look at it. It is cloud computing, blockchain, and supply chain. But it's, <laughs> it's how does it all fit, better. right? Yeah, it's better for you to explain it <laughs> for the audience. Sure. Um, one thing is important to realize that cloud computing actually is nothing about the technology at all. Mm. Cloud computing is a new economic model for delivering and consuming information technology. Yeah. It's key is that you can implement an idea that you may have without needing capital that was needed before. Before, if you had an idea, it could be the greatest idea in the world, but you couldn't show anybody what your idea could do if you didn't have the money to implement it. Yes. But cloud computing actually gives you access to that technology, to that infrastructure, without having the need to have a large amount of money. And all of the other advanced technologies like blockchain and machine learning and, and robotic yeah. process engineering and, and even artificial intelligence, they all started off as a new idea in someone's brain. Yes. Right? The only way they could actually show what that, that, that idea was viable was yes. because cloud computing was available as a platform yes. that they could actually implement, test, and iterate to quickly improve upon that idea. And they were able to do that cheaply, quickly, and efficiently. So in that way, cloud computing is really the foundation of all of these other advanced technologies. Totally agree. I still remember that when, uh, I still consider myself as a programmer. The mm -hmm. first time I spin up a server, I don't have to buy an actual server. I used to work at a, uh, a South Carolina Post, a newspaper outlet in Asia. And then uh -huh. I talked to the IT department and then <laughs> they told me, yeah, I have an actual server under my desk. If you kick it <laughs> and then we will go, <laughs> we go it's just a big job. But <laughs> at the time I was thinking, wow, uh, uh, if uh, I have to I buy, have to buy a, a machine like this, like it would be so expensive. So expensive. But right, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, exactly. And, and but I, now, now I can spin up a instance in AWS or whatever some cloud computer or Microsoft. It's so easy and it's so cheap. I can make an application to get away on it uh, just by one person. It's so amazing. That's, how I got into technology and I love it so much. And, and that's really the, uh, the gift that the ability to take an idea and deliver that to the world cheaply and easily. So, so um, GovCloud Network was actually my first uh, cloud computing company, so to speak. It was, it was um, I mean, I guess I can call me a serial entrepreneur because that was probably my fourth company, but I was focused on, at the time, on how to help the US federal government uh, leverage cloud computing, hence the name GovCloud, <laughs> Government <laughs> Cloud. Um, and I, uh, that was my, um, uh, the, the name of the first company, I was doing consulting to mm. government agencies on how to leverage cloud computing. Um, eventually, the uh, commercial world really mm. uh, adopted cloud and moved much faster 
than mm. the government marketplace. And uh, I started getting calls from commercial companies, you know, mm. or people would tell me, look, you know, I'm really interested for cloud from a commercial point of view, but mm. you only do government stuff, right? Because your company <laughs> name is GovCloud. And I would tell yeah, them- Yeah, I have this same perception to it. <laughs> yeah, I would say, no, no, I do commercial also. <laughs> Just to do the company. So it, that's why I actually changed the name of the company from GovCloud to GC Globalnet. <laughs> because, ah, <laughs> because, makes sense to me now. Yeah, because people would not actually call me because they thought I would only do cloud, mm -hmm. I would only do government work. So uh, that's the genesis of uh, GC Globanet. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as I said, the uh, uh, these other technologies like blockchain, machine learning, robotics, all layer on top of cloud. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but one of the most important aspects is uh, keeping track of the data and information and the, the, the history, the legacy of the data. Mm. The biggest, and, uh, and being able to uh, prove to other people that the information and data is actually correct or right, or that the right person put mm. that information. Um, or knowing the history of the data and the history of the information. And that's where blockchain actually helps. It gives a user um, the pedigree of the information and data that they are accessing. So it's the pedigree of the data on the cloud. And that's how I got... Uh, uh, started working with Total Network Services, which is a global blockchain mm. infrastructure that runs over the top of all of the other cloud infrastructures around the world. So it mm. gives you a, uh, a platform to verify the pedigree of your data, no matter what cloud you're operating on. So that's mm. total network services. Oh, well, can we bring the topic from technology to supply chain? Because yes. they are, they are, yeah, how all of these technology is impacting supply chain, maybe. Uh, how do you see the change from time to time, maybe in the last decade, or maybe even last two decades, maybe too long a horizon? Can you talk about it? Sure, absolutely. So remember, uh, don't forget the thought that it's important to know the pedigree of your data and information, because that's what blockchain delivers. Because when you look at global supply chains, uh, how did they really represent the integration and standardization from a physical point of view on the transport of commerce globally? I mean, containers that can be on ships and then go on trains, then go on semi uh, truck trucks um, give you that that a very cheap and practical and efficient way mm. of transporting goods globally. So logistics industry really uh, had a drive to reduce cost. Mm. And this led to globalization and just-in-time logistics. Mm. And that's today's global supply chain. Mm. Unfortunately, while there was a great deal of focus on the physical integration, 
the data and information infrastructure lag behind. Uh, mm. So although it was easy to move these containers, mm. the information about where these containers were, if they were ready to be moved, mm. what was in these containers, mm. what the contents, where they were going, there was no quick and easy way to get mm. that data. Everyone built their own bespoke IT mm. system. There was no standardization mm. in the information and data. Mm. So that drove things. So there was a big a question as to how to standardize data about logistics, about the supply chain. And that's where blockchain mm. became important. And companies like IBM started mm. building industry-focused blockchains to provide information and data about the supply chain mm -hmm. that layers on top of the cloud, right? Yeah. So, so uh, there was not a big push for this until the global blockchain broke during the pandemic because of the lack of information and data about the supply chain. So right now, what's critical to the physical supply chain is the information supply chain. Hence, yes. And that's why I started working with, uh, that's how I actually developed Source Connect which was a blockchain enabled platform for identifying and doing commerce with suppliers. And I started working with Supply Chain Now and launched Digital Transformers because mm -hmm. the entire supply chain industry needs to transform their information technology through the use of cloud computing, blockchain, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. robotic process engineering, and so forth. So that's why we have digital transformers and supply chain now. <clears throat> Thank you. Be uh, before I say something about what you just said, a quick look to the audience. Supply Chain Now is the another podcast that I myself follow. I listen uh, on a regular basis as a supply chain professional. So don't just listen to this podcast, also listen to Supply Chain Now. It is another great podcast that you should consume as a supply chain professional. Back to uh, Kevin, what just said. Can I paraphrase something? Uh, what you just said. Finally, the IT infrastructure can catch up on the actual physical uh, goods flow uh, transportation. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, and that's where we are right now. Companies looking at what happened over the pandemic are now investing into their information and data supply chain, right? By uh, leveraging cloud computing, leveraging uh, edge computing and implementing blockchain. Got it. Oh, uh, it's so great to talk to Fowley. Uh, <laughs> Someone some professor can professor give can us an overview about all this because supply chain to me, especially when I first came into this industry, this industry I was so uh -huh. confused because technology is complicated and also supply chain is complicated. When it mixed together, it's like exactly. spaghetti. You have to blend it, yes. Yeah, yeah. and finally, you help us to understand. 
Uh, so this is for the supply chain, uh, and you have done so many amazing work. I think to wrap up this episode, uh-huh. is there, uh, you have done so much work, even outside of supply chain and technology. Is there anything that you would like to talk about some other courses or front, uh, or some community work you would like to share with us? Like June 19th Museum or Four Days to Save the World, would you like to yeah. talk about it? Yeah. Sure. So, so those are those are two um, <laughs> other areas that I'm passionate about. Four yeah. Days to Save the World is actually a, a television show, streaming yeah. show, on the H to H or Human to Human uh, network, yeah. and it's once again it's about uh, having an idea and be able to implement that, this idea, and on the show there are different teams that are given a, a, a challenge. Uh, and they're, they're given four days to address and solve that challenge. And the challenges are things like eliminating hunger, um, eliminating uh, uh, or improving education. Um, and my team, is this task with eliminating racism uh, around uh-huh. the world. So the show premieres uh, in April, Earth Day of uh, uh, 2022. Yeah. And I invite you to uh, look at Four Days to Save the World and find out how my team and others uh, attack yeah. and solve these, these global challenges. And the June 19th Museum Mm -hmm. is actually, uh, we are uh, uh, developing a a museum that uh, is dedicated to celebrating Mm -hmm. the importance of diversity uh, and inclusion to Mm -hmm. the world through the stories of Juneteenth or June 19, which mm-hmm. is the day where um, African Americans were mm-hmm. freed from bondage in the United States uh, mm-hmm. due to the Emancipation Proclamation from President Abraham Lincoln. So on June 19th was actually the day in Galveston, Texas, mm-hmm. where the last slaves were free mm. and it is a it is a, a, a it's basically a celebration uh, of the importance um, of diversity and inclusion wow it's so meaningful uh, <laughs> thank you for doing it for the world because both uh the both two projects uh-huh. uh, Global issue, you are taking a global problem. So just, just I want to say thank you. Uh, <laughs> we are a global society. Yeah, uh, and technology <laughs> brings us together. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Kelvin. Uh, it is uh, absolutely my honor to interview you on my show. I love you so much. Thank you again. No, thank you very much. Have a great day.